Welcome to the Data-Driven Physical Simulation Lecture Series. My name is Young Su, and today I will be presenting three different ways of accelerating design optimization using reduced order models. A typical design optimization process starts with an initial design with a predefined computational domain, boundary condition, and external forces, and so on. Then you solve a forward physics partial differential equation numerically, then evaluate function and gradient in sensitivity analysis in order to update design variables in gradient-based optimization solver. Then you check the optimality condition to see if the updated design is optimal or not. If not, then you go back to solve physics PDE with updated design variable and repeat the process until the optimality condition is met. Here, the most expensive part of the procedure are physics PDE solve and sensitivity analysis parts. Usually, a sequence of large-scale linear or nonlinear solves are involved. For example, in wind turbine blade design problem, the total optimization process takes 3.6 hours using 72 processors, within which the physics PDE solving part takes 3.1 hours, taking 86% of the whole optimization process. Therefore, accelerating the forward physical simulations is extremely important. We use reduced order models to achieve this goal. Such a reduced order model can be built by first considering a design space where you collect data by solving full order model for several sample points. Then you apply machine learning techniques to build a re reduced order model. I'm especially interested in building an efficient reduced order model that includes the physics information as much as possible using the existing numerical method such as finite element, finite volume, and finite difference methods. Various machine learning techniques are available as listed here. Then using the surrogate model, you can accelerate simulations with various query points here and there, and many more which you have not used in the training phase. This data-driven approach has been successfully applied to various applications. In this talk, I will introduce three different examples of reduced total models accelerating design optimization. First one is so-called incremental reduced total model recycling method, which accelerates various density-based topology optimization. The second one is local reduced total model interpolation method that accelerates shape optimization of wing design with flutter constraints. The third one is the component-wise reduced order model that accelerates lattice type structure design. Okay, the first one, the incremental reduced order model recycling. The motivation for the incremental reduced order model recycling is very simple because the expensive part of the design optimization is physics PDE solve. We replace the physics PDE solve with reduced order model solve. The same thing for the sensitivity, ana sensitivity analysis. By the way, the ROM we are interested in building is data-driven. That implies that we cannot apply ROM, which is reduced to the model, in the beginning of the optimization process simply because we do not have data to build any reduced to the model. So we start with full order model in the beginning and use the solution of the full order model simulation to build an initial reduced order model. Then in the following iteration sequences, we use reduced order models to accelerate physics and adjoint PDE solves. Now we have another issue here. That is, even though we have a ROM, it becomes not accurate as the design gets farther away from the point where the ROM was built. To address this issue, we must have some way of knowing if the ROM solution is good or bad. If it is good, 
then we can move on with reduced to the model solution. However, if the ROM solution is bad, then we should not use it. Instead, we invoke the ROM recycling iterative method where reduced total model operators are used to define recycling subspaces in iterative linear solver, such as conjugate gradients. Note that this is full order model solve, which implies a new data is available to update our reduced total model. Once the reduced total model is updated, we continue the optimization process with a series of ROMs and FOMs until the convergence is reached. This is what we did to accelerate the design optimization. I would like to show the process of reduced total model for linear solve. Uh, for the ROMs for nonlinear problems, please check out the link below for my YouTube video. Here x is a state variable, b is force or right-hand side vector, and a is linear operator. First thing we do is to approximate the state variable as a linear combination of reduced basis phi, whose dimension is a lot smaller than the full order model dimension, b n. Here we obtain the reduced basis phi using incremental SVD, which is an efficient way of updating the old reduced basis with new coming data. The incremental SVD is efficiently implemented in open source code Libram, whose link can be found below. Then we plug the reduced solution representation into the linear system, which gives us an overdetermined system. To close the overdetermined system, we apply Galakin projection, which gives us the reduced linear system with reduced linear operators. If you solve this, you will get the reduced solution, which can be restored by multiplying the reduced total model solution by the reduced basis phi. We have applied this incremental reduced total model recycling method to many different density-based topology optimization problems. The first numerical example is 3D cantilever beam compliance minimization problem, where we achieve a speed up of 3.5. The second example is 3D wind turbine blade, blade internal structure compliance minimization problem. Here we achieve a speed up of 3.5 again. Finally, we solved 2D L bracket stress constraint problem where a where a speed up of 2.1 is achieved by the reduced total model. The second method is to use local reduced total model interpolation method on matrix manifolds. This one is somewhat different from the first reduced total model method in a sense that this second example of reduced total model has a vivid offline and online phases. In the offline phase, you build a library of reduced total models while in online phase, you simply use them without updates. This means that ROMs you build in the offline phase must be able to cover all the parameter change that might happen during the optimization process, right? We achieve this by building a library of local reduced total models and interpolate them within a matrix manifold. To illustrate it, Let's say that we have three local ROM operators built in three different points in our parameter space. Let's also assume that each ROM operator is symmetric positive definite. For example, which you would get if your problem is parabolic or elliptic. This implies that the local ROM operators are in the symmetric positive definite matrix manifold which we denoted as curly M here. Now let's say that your optimization process is curing a new point in parameter space, which is indicated as a red dot here. You must now obtain an interpolated local ROM operator at this red point to solve the most accurate reduced total model there. Now let's say you have interpolated the trained local ROMs A1 hat, A2 hat, and A3 hat element-wise 
then the resultant interpolated matrix would not be symmetric, symmetric positive definite, right? To resolve this issue, we interpolate them in a symmetric positive definite matrix manifold by first constructing a tangential surface with respect to a reference point X. And then we map each local ROM operators to a tangential manifold surface with respect to a reference point X using logarithmic mapping. Then we interpolate ROM operators in the tangential space with some interpolation techniques such as red IO basis function to obtain the interpolated ROM operator gamma i in the tangential space. Then we apply the exponential mapping to map the gamma i back to the symmetric positive definite matrix manifold. Although I have illustrated the procedure using the symmetric positive definite matrix manifold. As an example, other matrix manifolds are uh, possible to use. This table shows the logarithmic and exponential mapping formulas for various matrix manifolds. This is basically the main idea behind the local reduced to the model interpolation method on matrix manifold. The technical detail about how you determine where to build local reduced to the models are described in JCP paper indicated in the bottom here. We demonstrate the performance of the local reduced to the model interpolation on matrix manifold approach in a wing shape design problem with flutter constraints. The wing flutter problem is directly related to the safety so it is very important to design a wing so that the flutter does not occur. So we solved a shape optimization problem with three shape parameters, sweep angle, angle of attack, and dihedral angle. We formulate the optimization problem to maximize the lift drag ratio with bound constraints on the shape parameters along with stress constraints, flutter constraints, and weight constraints. Here we apply the local reduced to the model interpolation matrix manifold approach for the flutter constraints. If you solve this problem, whether you use full order model or reduced to the models, you get the same improvement of 17% lift increase, 15% increase in lift drag ratio with flutter constraints satisfied. With this optimal shape of the wing, if you use the full order model, then the whole optimization process takes 254.7 hours, while the reduced to the model only takes 14.5 hours, which gives a 17.6 CPU hour speed ups. The third and last example is the component wise reduced to the model lattice type structure design problem. Because the lattice type structure cons consists of many repetitive components, it would be beneficial to apply component wise reduced to the model. To explain the procedure, first of all, we build two component ROMs, that is, joint ROM and strut ROM. These ROMs are a compact representation of much fine mesh of joint and strut. Then introduce very important concept called port, which is an interface that talks to environment. It connects with other component reduced to the model. It can be used to impose boundary condition. Of course, you can add more components through an available port. It can be used to apply external force. You can even rotate the component and attach to the system and attach many more as you wish to form your desirable system domain. Then in design optimization, we assign a density variable to each component, which varies from zero to one. Usually we avoid zero to ensure the well-posedness. So we set our low bound to be 0 0.01. A small density variable implies putting no material there. Density of one means you put the material there. We automatize this procedure by solving design optimization problem. 
to find an optimal lattice structure, for example, to minimize the compliance of the system. Here is a numerical example for lattice structure design using component-wise reduced total model. Here we minimize compliance imposing a constraint of mass being at most 40%. The downward pressure force is applied on the top middle port. Dirichlet boundary conditions are imposed at the bottom corners. The full order monolithic finite element solved involves 2.7 million degrees of freedom, while the city of the ROM has only about 3,000 degrees of freedom. The movie shows the optimization history from the beginning. Initially, it started with a uniform density variable and evolves into an optimal design where blue component implies no materials there, while red component comp uh, implies a density variable of one. So you put materials there. With component-wise reduced total model, we achieve a speed up of 1000 and accuracy of less than 1% relative error. One great advantage of the component-wise reduced total model is that it restores the high dimensional solution. For example, we can restore the very detailed contour of stress fields at any component. We can even catch some stress concentration region. Another great advantage of CW-ROM component-wise reduced total model is that once the component reduced total models are trained, it can be reused to build a large lattice type structures, for example, with much more components, as you can see from this movie. This concludes my talk today. In summary, I have shown three different ways of accelerating design optimization with reduced total models. The first one was the incremental reduced total model recycling method with which we solved various density-based topology optimization problem. The second example was the local reduced total model interpolation method in matrix manifold with which we accelerated the shape optimization problem of the wing on the flutter constraint. Finally, the third example was the component-wise reduced total model, which accelerates the lattice type structure design process by around 1,000 times. You can find the technical details about these three methods in three research papers. If you have questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to me at my email address. Thank you for listening.